Okay, let's talk about percent. And when it comes to practical mathematics, there's probably nothing more important than your understanding of percent. So you just can't, you know, uh, open your phone, look at the TV, you know, look at a newspaper or anything without seeing this symbol, you know, where they're talking about inflation or, you know, mortgage rates increasing or credit cards going up or, hey, maybe there's a 50% sale on your favorite clothes at a particular store. Whatever the case is, you need a strong understanding of percent. So that would first kind of start with obviously uh, being able to calculate percent and solve uh, problems like this. Let's say I asked you what 6% of 20 is. Well, hopefully you'd be like, oh, that's why I got to change that percent to a decimal. That's 0 0.06 and I multiply by 20 uh, and you would be correct. Now, of course, I'm just kind of reviewing this really fast just to kind of uh, make sure that you are thinking big picture about percent. But there's other type of percent problems. So if you're like, oh, I know how to do a problem like that. Well, you're not done in terms of the skills that you want to know about percent. What if I said um, this question, 13 is 8% of what number? Okay, 13 is 8% of what number? Well, this is a different flavor of percent problem than this one. But you're going to have to know how to solve those type of problems as well. And then when, uh, you know, in terms of the topic of percent, we have other type of problems like percent of increase and percent of decrease. And in this particular problem, we're going to be talking about the percent of decrease. So let's take a look at a situation like uh, we have 18 and then this value dropped down to 11.5. OK, so. We want to calculate here, what is the percent of decrease if we had 18 and it dropped down to 11.5? Now, if you know how to do this, go ahead and pause the video, put your answer into the comment section. Don't feel uh, shy about using a calculator. However, the one thing I would suggest, just so you can get a good sense of your level of understanding on this, is to write out your work. Okay, just don't get, you know, put an answer in and be like, oh, I got, I got it right. Think about, you know, the setup. Okay, what did you do to calculate this? You know, a good way to always check your, um, your knowledge of mathematics is ask yourself, could I teach this to my younger brother or sister? Could I tutor my friend in mathematics? Could I teach them percent of decrease? Because if we could teach something, that's a real good indication that you know something. Okay, so when you do this work, you know, if you want to participate and put your answer into the comment section, just ask yourself, what did you do? Okay, because that really is going to justify your comprehension of the topic. But uh, I'm going to get into all of this here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And if you're struggling in math or failing in math, please do not give up. I'm telling you right now, you have the potential to be an A student in mathematics, but it requires you uh, to have access to great math instruction. That's clear understandable, and most importantly, comprehensive. You need to see a lot of problems solved. You need great math instruction. So that's where I can help you out. If you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. Uh, you can find a link to it in the description of this video, but I teach much, much more thoroughly than I do my, my YouTube channel, and I break everything down in little pieces so anyone and everyone can master mathematics. Also, if you are preparing for any sort of test with the math section, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses. If you homeschool, check out uh, my award-winning middle and high school mathematics courses for homeschooling. I think you'd be very happy that you did that. Hopefully, you got a pair of great math notes to study from. If you don't, if you're not taking great notes right now, you need to fix that immediately. But um, you can use a set of my notes. I'm going to leave links to my notes also in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so uh, now that we thought about percent and, you know, it's related topics, uh, let's go ahead and get into actually calculating the percent of decrease if something went from 18 to 11.5. Now, what could this be an example of? You know, maybe you were making $18 per hour, okay, and then unfortunately you lost that job and now the only other job you can get is um, 11.5 or you're, you know, somebody say, hey, we're going to drop your pay down from here to here. That's an unfortunate situation. We are talking about a decrease, but this would be an example of uh, us trying to find out the percent of decrease. How much percent, how much did this go down by percent? Okay, that's the overall idea here. All right, so let's go ahead and give you a nice little formula. All right, so here it is. Uh, basically, you want to take the old value and you want to subtract away the new value. 
and then we'll divide it by the old value. We're going to get some sort of decimal when we do this, okay? Now, to uh, when we have this decimal value, this is a decimal, to go from a decimal to a percent, we need to multiply by uh, multiply by uh, 100, okay? always like to... Uh, um, kind of explain these formulas. Now here, if you went from the new value minus the old value, the only thing that would end up happening is you would have a negative sign, okay? So I'm gonna um, suggest that you refrain from um, having a negative sign in your percents, although it does make sense. If it was like a you know, negative 6.8%, that would be a um, uh, obviously a decrease, a negative percent. So you could, it all depends on how your teacher may want to see this, but you can have the new value minus the old value, but it's always the old value. Let me go ahead and show you now by this uh, example. Okay, it's not going to be the new value in the denominator. So here we have 18 and a drop down to 11.5. So we need to identify what is the old and what is the new. Well, we're starting, our starting point here is 18. So this is like our old salary unfortunately <laughs> and here would be like our new salary and let's i you know i hope i don't know why i can't think of a better example right now um in terms of uh of something but anyways hopefully you get the idea um, if you have a better example put that into the comment section but you get the idea what i'm trying to say here's our 18 this was our old amount now we drop down to our new amount 11.5 so we're going to put our 18 as our old amount here and we'll have our 18 down here and then our new amount will be 11.5. So let's go to do that now. So that'd be 18 minus 11.5. Now, again, if I put 11.5 minus 18, I'll end up with a negative number. Okay. So I don't like to, um, necessarily have that. I want to give, I want you to express this in as a positive percent by split, but by specifically saying this is the percent of decrease. Okay. Now your teacher may want, uh, that negative value. So you check with uh, your teacher and how, you know, um, you're expected to learn this. Both are kind of, kind of correct. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and calculate. So 18 minus 11.5 over now, what's not in dispute is the old amount, okay, the original amount, which is 18 down here as our uh, denominator. So we're going to get this decimal, then we're going to multiply by 100 to get ourselves to a percent. Actually, that's not the percent of increase. This would be the percent of decrease. Matter of fact, let me go back up here and fix this. Um, I actually took these little notes here from a video I did the other day on percent of increase. It's effectively the same concept, almost the same formula. But here, this is the percent of decrease. All right, so now let's go ahead and calculate this. Don't feel shy about using a calculator. So 18 minus 7.5, 6.5. We're going to take that 6.5. We're going to divide by 18, and then we'll multiply by 100. 6.5 divided by 18 our calculator. We get 0.611. Uh, of course, there's some other digits, but we'll just uh, round it to 6.11. Now we're going to multiply that by 100, and we get 36.11%. Okay. So this is our percent of decrease, 36.11%. So let's go ahead and check this work, okay? So if 18 goes down, now notice the words I'm using here. If 18 goes down, that's a decrease, right? So this would be something like, hey, you know, your pay is going to go down from $18 and uh, your employer is thinking about, hey, we're going to drop your pay down 36.11%. What's going to be your new pay? Okay, well, we want to calculate this percent of decrease. So how would uh, how would we do this? Well, we need to find 36.11% of 18, right? So how do we find a percent of a number? Well, we're going to take this percent, convert it to a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left. So that's going to be 0.3611, okay? Uh, that's the decimal equivalent of 36.11%. We'll take that and multiply by 18, and we're going to get 6.4999, okay? We're going to go ahead uh, and round this up to 6.5. So if your employer is saying, hey, we're going to drop your pay down 36.11%, they're going to drop it down by $6.50. This is the amount they're dropping it by. So your new pay would be 18 minus that, that decrease, okay, that uh 36.11% uh, decrease, which is 6.5. Now that leaves us to 11.5. And of course, that's what we had in our original problem up here. Okay. Uh, here was our old and it went down to 11.5.
which was that 6.5% drop or that 36.11% uh, decrease, okay, percent of decrease. So again, if you have the negative sign in there, if you taught this a little bit differently, you know, uh, percent of increase and, and percent of decrease are pretty similar, okay, conceptually. Um, so, you know, a lot of this too comes in uh, to play for um, those of you that work with Excel spreadsheets or you're working with data analysis. Uh, da data analysis. So, you know, as long as you can under uh, under stand and interpret uh, percent of increases and percent of decreases, it still works the same way. It's your original amount or your old amount, you know, that's the way you need to look at it. And then you need to know, hey, where, where did that amount, where's that amount going to? Is it going to, um, you know, is it decreasing or is it increasing? So if my old is go, is dropping down, I'm looking at a percent of decrease. If my old is going up, which, you know, of course, if we're talking about pay, like say to 22, 18 20 to 22, we're talking about a percent of increase. All right, if you need to know more about percent, I have a ton of videos on percent uh, in my YouTube channel that definitely definitely help you out. But I'm gonna strongly suggest that you check out my Math Foundations course and or my pre-algebra course or Algebra 1 if you're at that level. All those courses I thoroughly teach percent. You can find those again in my Math Help program. But if this little video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.